with an agitation mouth about your last Florida Classic. Take care of business. One play at a time. Do it for the guys in green. Do it for everybody orange and green in the stands. Do it for the 85,000 that's going to be watching. Everybody good on that? Yes, sir. Here we go, man. Let's go to work. Let's go. They're going to see a lot of problems. Here we go. Faith! Faith! Fundamental! Faith! 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 And let the games begin from the city beautiful, the Fan Fest outside the Florida Blue, Florida Classic. Marching Wildcats ready to strike up the band. How about the Rattlers saying, get down, ready to go in this in-state rivalry between Florida and m and Bethune-Cookman. As we say hello and welcome you to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. An all-important set of bragging rights on the line for the Wildcats, winners of their last two, the seventh-ranked team in FCS with a perfect record on the line today here from Camping World Stadium. We say hello. What's up, fam? With the former Howard University and NFL quarterback, Jay Walker, I'm Tiffany Green. We heard from both coaches this week the importance of this Florida Classic. If there is one game to win on the schedule, it's this one. Absolutely. I mean, rivalry week, we know about that all over the country. But down here, this game always just hits a little different. We talk about this year's Classic, where Bethune-Cookman's coming there playing their best football of the year. They've won two consecutive games. They want to keep that streak going. Florida A&M has taken care of their business all season long. You don't want to have a dream season, have a little blemish on it because you didn't take care of business here in the Florida Classic. When you look at these two schools and they're about four hours from each other, I think of a guy by the name of Marcus Riley. Started his career, graduated from Bethune Cookman, but now wears a FAMU uniform. He's an impact player for the Rattlers. Yeah, and that's kind of the way the college football landscape is nowadays with this transfer portal. But Marcus Riley is an impact player. A tremendous pickup for head coach Willie Simmons. He can hurt you in special teams. One of the most dangerous retirement out there. The fastest guy on the field. If you're Bethune Cookman, you better pay attention to where your old teammate Marcus Riley is today. On the other side, you have a legacy player and a guy like Jimmy Robinson the third. And what he does is they've got so many Jimmy Robinsons. His cousins have played there, brothers have played there. He is the bruising running back out of that group. He's a guy that can get you tough yards in between the tackles. He's going to need to come up with a couple explosive plays today to help this Wildcat offense. All right, all the trash talking has taken place leading up to now and kickoff is on the other side from the Florida Blue Florida Classic when we come back. And welcome back to the city beautiful and absolutely pleasant oh, afternoon yeah. here. The marching Wildcats of Bethune Cookman rocking in the stands. Florida AM's marching 100 exiting the field after performing the Star Spangled Banner and the Negro National Anthem as well. An impeccable version of it. credit to that family. That might have been the best version of those two songs I've heard in a long time. They sound great. And, Jay, when you think about these two teams and these two coaches heading these programs, Raymond Woody Jr. made the decision to come back to his alma mater. They selected him. He wanted to be there. And this is his first Florida Classic and an all-important one for the alumnus of Bethune-Cookman. And important for him, you know, every coach we see when they come into their first classic, they always act like they're prepared for it. And he played at Bethune-Cookman, so he knows. But even at game time, you could tell, he was like, oh, wow, this, this is on a different level. It's gotten bigger since he played at Bethune-Cookman. A lot of distractions, but he's done a really good job of trying to keep his team laser-focused. Well, one of the things that coaches tend to do on the other sideline. Willie Simmons earlier this week in the SWAC press conference made sure to wish Coach Woody well in his first Florida Classic, understanding what that was like for Coach Simmons some years back. And he's now got some skin in the game and there he is, emerging shotgun Willie as they used to call him, the former <laughs> QB and in his sixth season on the highest of seven hills leading this program. And Jay, they have impressed all season long. Only two losses on the last two seasons in conference play currently with a perfect record. And it's on the line here as we are underway. Bethune Cookman deferred, so Florida AM gets the ball first. And here on the return, that's Darian Oxendine. And Oxendine 
with a solid return to open up this ball game. We mentioned the Rattlers coming in this season with a nine and one record and the guy who's helped get them there and who's really developed now in his second and final year in the program is their quarterback, Jeremy Musa. And Musa, who sat last week after a little nagging shoulder injury, is back onto the field, rested and ready to go. You know, the West Coast kid has come in here and really made a difference in the impact. Anytime you play quarterback for Willie Simmons, type of offensive system you have to be able to make all the throws have a big arm and you have to be two steps ahead of the defense and Musa has had a fantastic senior campaign you see Marcus Riley the jet sweep to number four the former Wildcat now Rattler got out to a great gain there from the first play from scrimmage but there is a penalty marker back at the 32 yard line Tony Ross our head official for today Holding. Offense, number 81, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. That's going to come back because of the tight end, Kamari Young with the holding penalty. And so that erases a 19-yard gain. Did, did, did Bethune-Cookman not hear my opening comment? Know where Marcus Riley is on the football field all day. He's an impact player. He can hurt you. He's motivated to come out and do well against this defense. Not the start you want. They were fortunate that Kamari Young was called for the hold, but I would still make sure I keep eyeballs on number four when he's in the game. So now ball placed on the 23-yard line of the Rattlers. Now first and 20 here. And Musa with time looking and short hops that one to his intended target, Jamari A. Sharid. It's second down. And one thing that makes Florida A&M unique they're one of the few offenses that can get a penalty on first down, back them up 10, 11 yards, and they'll still convert. I mean, first and 20, your percentages go way down. But because of the creative play calling and Moose's patience and able to pick apart a defense, they feel like getting 20 yards on three plays is no problem. Off to a slow start now, but let's see what they come up with. Play action. Musa looking. There's Kamari Young, and Young sees that one deflected as on the coverage with Steven Sparrow, the nickel back for the Wildcats. He was actually open, but that ball kind of floated out of the release of Musa there. One where if he throws that ball sooner with a little bit more strength in it, watch this ball just kind of sail on him as he throws it. That's hanging in the air too long. Any time you get a tight end behind the defensive back by three or four steps, put that ball on him. Remember, Musa had the week off. Junior Maritovic, Maritovic had the start last week in the win over Lincoln. Let's see if Musa can shake off some rest here on third and long. Has plenty of time and delivers the target right to Kamari Young, but he's going to be well short of the first down, probably by about four or so yards. And so the punting unit will trot onto the field with Trey Wilhoyt. And they ran sluggo routes on the outside, little slant goes, and he missed a wide open receiver on the bottom half of the screen if you were going to be able to see him. So they gave him a bunch formation there, and they tried to set up some double moves. The tight end did a good job of getting open there, but he was not going to have the depth to go 20 yards. Should have taken the vertical shot. Will Hoyt back to punt it away. High flying punt and fair caught at the nine yard line of the Wildcats. Make it 10 yard line after that 51 yard punt. And we'll get a chance to look on the other side of Raymond Woody Jr. and his squad as, again, they've won their last two games, been in a lot of ball games, and he's kind of funneled through a number of different quarterbacks this season. Philippe Pathea was the guy who had carried much of the load because he was injured from last week. They said they're going to go with Walter Simmons the third to start off this Florida Classic. And, and you want to talk about a contrast in offenses. Bethune Cookman's offense and Florida A&M's offense, completely different. Yes, they want to run the ball. Every offense wants to do that. But when it comes to the passing game, they're not a pre-snap read type game. It's more of a drop back, find somebody. If not there, take off and run. And you'll see the difference that shows up scary thing about Bethune's offense though when you got a quarterback that's running around and not making a lot of pre-snap reads they can hurt you for explosive plays 
which can change the momentum of a game in a hurry. James Ash with the tackle for a loss. This one fumbled as the pitch bounced its way over to Jimmy Robinson in the third and not necessarily the start that Bethune Cookman would have liked here. But I'm not surprised. I watched the field. They don't do anything smooth. Offensively, nothing about this offense is smooth. It's uncanny. They're not as sound as you like to be, but they've got athletes, and they can hurt you with big plays when they happen, but they can also hurt themselves with turnovers. They just barely avoided one there. And this one's going to go against Bethune-Cookman. Ball start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's on the left guard, the true freshman, David Patalsi. One of the things Raymond Woody Jr. and his team has prided themselves on this season is being among the least penalized teams in the country. Now backing themselves up deeper into their own territory from the five. It's third and 14. Got to get to the 20. And escaping here is Walter Simmons, the third, and he picks up the first down. That's something you can't do if you're Florida a &M, and credit to Walter Simmons for making that happen. Yeah, you know, you think this offense can't hurt because they can't throw the ball, but I told you, they want this quarterback to run around and create plays, and on a simple quarterback draw, they were able to pick up the first down. Good play for Bethune-Cookman. The handoff and good running up ahead by... Jimmy Robinson, the third gain of about five yards. Isaiah Major on the tackle. We mentioned Jimmy Robinson, the third, that name so familiar within this Bethune-Cookman program, a guy who is described as a heart and soul of this team. Quick play from scrimmage, and the pass complete to Dakari Allen Johnson, pushed out. And now third down and short, or manageable, rather, for the Wildcats. The tough part about Florida A&M defensively is their, their interior defensive linemen, the nose tackle, Stanley Mentor, General Hunt, James that They really take away the interior running game, so you have to take a chance and run it outside. And this one, the fumble, falls on the ground. Florida A&M recovers it. Isaiah Major picks up the football. And the opportunistic defense taking advantage of the miscue offensively on the handoff for the Wildcats and sets up great field position for the Rattlers. Um, they do nothing smooth on offense. It's not a smooth running machine. They make mistakes right here. A little indecision between Dakari Johnson and Simmons in the backfield. That's a normal play. You sit there, it's third and short. Just get a ball to him unless you see something different. But good job of getting behind the line of scrimmage by Florida and m And as you mentioned, a very opportunistic defense. And they hurt the Wildcats here early. The ball placed on the 22-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Little fake reverse and taking it. That's Jeremy Musa. And Musa with a great gain there on first down. Pickup of nine. And Jeremy Musa, who's known as a pocket passer, a very traditional QB, says, well, I can flex a little something in the run game every now and then. Yeah, that, that was a great play call. I love I love the play design. It gave the defense a lot of misdirection to look for. Then next thing you know, Musa still has the football with the run pass option. And they're going to give him enough yardage for the first down. So a fresh set for the Rattlers. Here's Jaquez Yen. And Jaquez Yen, who's barreling over inside the five, down at about the three-yard line. And another solid run here brings up first and goal, and, and or Yant, second and goal. And Yant second Lowe, down. You know, transfer into Florida A&M from the University of Nebraska. That talented coming out of high school, and here now he's been that power runner to go along with the finesse passing game that Coach Simmons like to have. Look at the big 235-pound running back just running through arm tackles, straight ahead downhill runner north south. You see the big lead blocker there for Jacques Yen, who won't be denied. And kind of crawls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, FAMU. Well, they brought in big Ricky Taylor, the offensive lineman, to clear the way for Yant. And he finishes it off. And I'm going to call this the Florida Classic run. 
Normally, he may stop right there and go down, but it's the classic. He wants to get into the end zone and celebrate amongst the many people that are here. Probably dreamt about playing this game as a youngster growing up in Tallahassee. Great second effort and balance to get across the goal. Well, first touchdown of the Florida Classic for the Tallahassee native, Jaquez Yan. He puts on the belt and gets congratulated on the sideline. Rattlers jump on the board first after the fumble for Bethune. Cookman punching it in from about three yards out is Yan. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. So you can sell it online, take it in person, and go big like a million orders big. Whatever the stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. I'm so glad you're my personal shopper. I'm your bodyguard. Oh, yeah, that's right, right. Day and night, right? I actually only work the day shift. Well, then, who am I talking to at 3 a.m.? I think you're confusing me with your Discover card again. I am? Yeah, it's their 24-7 customer service. They also protect you from fraud on unauthorized purchases. Thank you. Oh, really? 24-7 customer service. What do you protect me from? Mostly yourself. And zero dollar fraud liability. Oh. When you order a Big Mac in the McDonald's app today, you earn points you can redeem for a free Big Mac in your future. Future, you says. Thanks. Earn free food with the app. The Florida Classic. <laughs> the Florida Classic on ESPNU is presented by McDonald's. You think about over the years, all of the great so rivalry Sayla. games, and they've gone back since 1925 when these two teams first met in the Sunshine State, and since 1978, they've called it the Florida Classic meeting in off-site venues, first in Tampa, it's been home here in Orlando for a good while now and how about this you go from the SIAC to the MEAC and now foes in their newest conference the Southwestern Athletic Conference yeah, they're definitely joined at the hip yeah. you know you <laughs> said you think fam you think Bethune Cookman you think Bethune you think fam so they've been doing it for a long time and something I learned this year the neutral site I think the most unique place was they've held this game before at the Daytona Motor Speedway yes they have played before at the Daytona Motor Speedway during the regular season that's what's so cool is the fact that you know when you think about just how they are connected you know both coaches said hey look we're good outside of this but during these three and a half hours we don't like each other we don't like each other too much at all there's a whole lot of trash talking that goes on. And did you have to wear that badge, win or lose, for another 364 days? Yeah, but, you know, and I've seen it, but I don't like it. I'm old school. I don't like the rivalry being so cordial. Like, it's okay to hate your opponent that whole week. Like, I don't even want to, you know, when I took on a rival, I didn't want to see their colors, you know, all that stuff. They're a little cordial now. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking back, but, like, Dr. Humphreys made it clear that Bethune Cookman had no business beating Florida A&M. And then when you had guys like Brian Jenkins, when he started that long streak, he he hated that. You know, he, he made it known, like, I don't like him. So I like the intense rivalry. Check out this. Raymond Woody Jr., graduate of Bethune-Cookman. His sister, Jacinda Woody, a graduate of Florida A&M. She's now a pharmacist in the Palmetto area near Bradenton. And so you think about how these two are always intertwined. Right in the same household, you have one child going to one school and another child going to the other. And, and that's something that you know. You're from down here. That never makes sense to me. You know, like <laughs> legacy is legacy. Like if you're in my household, you go to our school. But they split it up here a little bit. And they, they brag about it too. Like, oh, I got relatives that go to FAMU. I've got relatives that go to Bethune Cookman. That's a little different. Here on second and seven, Bethune Cookman on their second offensive series. They hand it off and shaking a couple of tacklers and then finally brought down the ball carrier for the Wildcats. Going to be stopped a couple of yards short. And that's that good secondary running in between the tackles that Jimmy Robinson can do. The initial contact probably would have been a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. But he was able to wiggle forward and pick up some much needed yardage. Now let's see if they do a better job on third and short than they did last time they faced this scenario. 
Now Lynn Johnson to the bottom of your screen was in motion. And Jimmy Robinson close. was determined very close. Isaiah Major coming up with the tackle just depends on the spot here. By the looks of it, from where we're sitting, it's going to be... A football short. Yep. Oh, they moved it back a little bit. But about two football short, and that's tough. You have to punt the ball in this situation, I would think. Maybe try and draw them off sides. Risky call here early from Raven Woody. It's the Florida Classic, ladies and gentlemen, and you got him right there. There was Isaiah Major, exactly what they wanted to do, and Major fed into it. Offside, defense number zero, unabated to the quarterback. To the five-yard penalty, the penalty results in the first down. So Isaiah Major, the senior, the preseason, all swag selection, first team. He's been an excellent player in this defense. Gives him a fresh set of downs. And on the run, Jimmy Robinson, the third. You know, what do we hear from Coach Woody before the game? Look, this guy is just going to pick up the hard run, hard yards. Whatever we need him to do, he's going to try to barrel through and, and pick up those tough yards. Yeah, in between the tackles, and you know, that's where real running backs tell you they make their bread and butter, having the ability to absorb blows and still pick up yards. You see right there, I mean, this Florida a and defensive line is good. I mean, all season long, we've seen running backs get swallowed up in there, but yet we're seeing a little five foot seven, 195 pound Jimmy Robinson III able to pick up some tough yards running in the teeth of the defense. From the Wildcats, 45 yard line, line here on third down. And once more, but getting back on time. As the player looked like they jumped off sides for the Rattlers, they got back on time, and the pass incomplete. Uh, they called, I think they called it. I think the. We didn't see the flag. down here might have called the yep. offside, so I think they're going to be rewarded with it. Offside. Defense number one. Five yard penalty. The penalty results in a first down. So, second time a penalty has aided in a first down, kept this drive alive, and the Rattlers miscues now helping this Bethune Cookman drive as the ball spotted at the 50 yard line. Opening quarter from the Florida Classic. And Jimmy Robinson, the third, just so tough. And a good game there. Pickup of seven yards on the play. And tackled by Deco Wilson. But they are going to continue to give a steady dose of Jimmy Robinson the third until they can slow him down. Six straight run plays this series. And make it seven this time. It's the quarterback calling his own number. And, and you have to give credit to the offensive line because coming into this game, Florida A&M only gave up 83 yards rushing per game. I mean, one of the best in the country, that mark right there. And Bethune Cookman showing they've got some signs that maybe they are going to be able to run the football. Moving with tempo in this series and really to open the game, the game, the idea is getting back up to the line and just keep going and maybe try to wear down this defense early on. And Bethune Cookman with a gain of three on that run. Florida A&M a little frustrated. Bringing guys close to the line of scrimmage. Safeties are coming up for run support, trying to make the adjustment. There's Simmons trying to scoot his way through, happy feet through, and positive yardage on the play, tackled by Isaiah Major. And here on third down, Jay, because they have run the ball consistently on this drive, what do you think Joe Garbino, the offensive coordinator, dials up here? probably going to run the ball. I think it's two down territory. Probably too far out for a field goal. The way they've had success running the football would not be surprised if they dial up another run. Indeed they do, but there is big number 96 to tackle them and bring them down. Give it up for McCody Robertson, a loss of two on the play. And Florida A&M knew they were going to run it as well, and sooner or later, those defensive tackles for family are going to show up and make a play. So they got beat a couple times on that drive, that. but when they really needed it, did a good job of getting behind the line of scrimmage and forcing the Wildcats to a punt. So 
So Anthony Frederick back to punt. This one bounces out of bounds. That's going to be spotted at the two-yard line. So that 35-yard punt pins them inside the five. And the Rattlers will start from their own two-yard line. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. So you can sell it online, take it in person, and go big, like a million orders big. Whatever the stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. I'm so glad you're my personal shopper. I'm your bodyguard. Oh, yeah, that's right, right. Day and night, right? I actually only work the day shift. Well, then, who am I talking to at 3 a.m.? I think you're confusing me with your Discover card again. And? Yeah, it's their 24-7 customer service. They also protect you from fraud on unauthorized purchases. Oh, really? It's a 12 showdown. It's number five, Washington, led by Michael Penix Jr. taking on the 11th ring, Oregon State Beavers. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern. 30 Pacific on e ABC and the ESPN app. And the Huskies putting their perfect 10 and 0 record on the line, but traveling to Corvallis is never easy. No, tough road trip night game as well. Oregon State, the favorite in that game there, was a little bit surprised by that. They played out, but if Washington's going to make it to the college football playoff, they're going to have to earn it. You know, they've got to. Take on Washington State, who looked good last night. They have to make it to the Pac-12 championship and Oregon State, so it won't be easy for the Huskies, but we'll see how it plays out for them. The Rattlers back up deep into their own territory to start this drive, and Musa hands it off to one of his big backs, Terrell Jennings, and Jennings has a number of gold jerseys to try to bring him down as he's tackled, but gives them some breathing room getting out to the 10-yard line after that pickup of eight. Yeah, poor start. I mean, the one thing you can do to frustrate Willie Simmons and all his creative play calls is back him up. Every OC hates being backed up because you don't want to do misdirection in your own end zone. And you get a big run like that to give you a little breathing room, you can open up the playbook, but the Wildcats get stout against the run. How about Jalen Christian coming up from his nickel position along with Amari Jones to drive him back two yards? Third and four upcoming here for the Rattlers. We'll see if this Bethune-Cookman defense can drive them off the field. Watch Marcus Riley lined up in the slot, bottom of the screen. Musa rolling to his right, the side of Riley gets rid of it, throws it out of bounds as he's hit by Thomas, and that's going to bring up fourth down. A huge victory. I mean, one thing Florida A&M does not do often is take three plays and out. This is an offense that likes to pick you apart and go down the field. And good job by the Wildcat defense forcing the punt. You think of, you know, Musa obviously having last week off, getting back into the flow of things. Seems a little late. He seems a little late. You know, the throw earlier that he sailed and then even on that one there, it was a quick sprint, but Riley was open for a split second, but he was late and had to go away with it. So the timing may be a little bit slower than we're used to seeing Musa do it, but you expect that to improve as the game moves on. Averaging 43 yards a punt is Trey Wilhoyt, and this one is whistle dead. The layer game, offense number 99. After distance to the goal, down. Already punting from his own end zone. Just going to back up just a little bit. But right now, Florida A&M not looking as sharp as we have seen them this season. Season the seventh ranked team in all of FCS. And obviously a very important game because it's a rivalry game. They're out to a 7-0 lead. Will Hoyt trying again this time. A great kick, booming kick, sending Dakari Allen Johnson back to his own 35, and now he's tackled and brought down. There was Cheney in on the stop. 
58-yard punt from Will Hoyt. And let's see if that charges up the dark cloud. festivities and there's so much activity that goes on but this is one of the highlights of the Florida Classic weekend there's no question marks Jay as as to who won the Battle of the Bands it, it, it depends perhaps what side you're on if you're just a neutral party you just enjoy it period it, it, it took me a while to figure out a lot of people think I don't like family right and Love family, been loved family for a long time. When you showed up, all of a sudden they thought I hate family. Which isn't true. But then you know what? You know what really upset them? One year, I had a call like I see it, and Bethune Cookman had a better band. And family's like, no way, you just hating on us. And ever since then, it's been steamrolling. Well, now you did participate and strike up the oh, band that, that song one of the is hot. classic. That song is hot. Let's go Wildcats Wild is one of the premier tunes, but you struck yeah. up the band, so you know it would make people feel some type of way. I call like I see it. Uh. All start. Offense, number 21, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, both bands are elite bands. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely elite bands. Absolutely. The question is, will either one of them end up in Atlanta for the band of the year competition? The inaugural event will be December 15th from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. For the Pickett Celebration Bowl. Ooh, what a hit delivered by Johnny Chaney Jr., the linebacker, and driving him back. This is how you play your position right here. Everybody's holding him up and all. Running back tries to make a cut and just ear holes him, as we used to say back in the day. Good solid hit by Johnny Chaney Jr. Second and 13, they're giving chase to Simmons, and the pass incomplete going for Tink Boyd on the play. We see the scout report accurate. Nothing looks smooth with them cooking offensively, but a play like that, he'll make somebody miss, and one of these wide receivers will change directions, and they'll hit you for a big play. This is not an offense, I feel, that can just drive the ball down the field consistently. They are relying upon big, explosive plays and Florida a and has to stay sound defensively. Well, going back to their last drive, they had 11 straight runs before that pass here on third and 13, an obvious passing situation. He completes it That's underneath. The right there. <laughs> That's Markai Shaw, the true freshman out of the backfield and able to convert once more in this game on third down, a pickup of 16. Nothing's pretty about this. I mean, protection's gonna break down a little bit. He's got a scramble. Oh, last minute, who can I find? Emergency throw. Gets the check down, and they pick up the first down. Isaiah Major coming in with the tackle of Shaw, who made that catch on the last play. Shaw, who is out of California, coming over as a big recruit to Bethune-Cookman. Located in Daytona Beach, Florida, the world's most famous beach. That's what they, they marketed it as, right? <laughs> And once more, the effectiveness on the ground for the Wildcats, we've seen it in spurts during this game, and there, the freshman picking up seven, and it moves the chains. Well, that's been a surprise. The success they have had running the football, I don't think you build your game plan that way, but they've been able to get away with it thus far, kind of pressure this Florida a and defensive line. Inside a minute to go in this opening quarter, and Isaiah Major once more, the noisy linebacker for the Rock Rattlers, bringing down the ball carrier. Tell you what, though, I like this kid Shaw, six feet, two hundred and twenty-five pound, true freshman. He's got a little pep in his step and some power to go behind it. So, he might have found a hot hand with some fresh legs, doing some damage. Razzle dazzle. 
Oh, they get it back to the quarterback, and Simmons drops it. Major giving chase to him, oh, but him able to get the throw away and nearly completed it to Shaw. That's between Cook and offense. I mean, they don't do anything easy. They fool everybody, but then the quarterback's not able to hold on to it. Then finds an open receiver, and he's not able to hold on to it. Right now, that's just how Bethune-Cookman's offense operates. It's uncanny. Nothing smooth about it. And that could have been a really big play because he had some room to run if Shaw was able to hold on to that ball coming out of the backfield. Instead, it's third down, 12 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Man in motion, they hand it off to Jimmy Robinson, the third, and quickly there in the backfield, that's Dakar Edwards. Edwards with the tackle for a loss, and that will bring us to the close of the first quarter. So Florida A&M's defense picked up and recovered a fumble earlier in this one, and that led to the only score of the game by Jaquez Yan. It's seven nothing here from Orlando after one. Get ready, get ready, get ready for the Cricket Celebration Bowl in Atlanta next month on the 16th. Kickoff at noon, pitting the SWAC champion versus the MEAC champion for the HBCU national title. A champion will rise in the A. And now for our Fansville College Football Update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. You see it there. The Bison will be the representative from the MEAC in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. HU is coming to A-Town to take on the participant to be determined out of the swag. Jets off to Larry Simmons. Larry Scott. Larry Scott and Quint Williams and the boys for getting the job done. They kept the momentum going, and they will be rewarded with the trip to compete for the HBCU National Championship. Well, Willie Simmons and the Rattlers hope to meet him there, but the SWAC Championship still has to be played. Unknown who they will play on December 2nd as a pooch punt trying to pin the Rattlers inside the 10-yard line, and they'll get that again. Jay, I don't know if I've heard that much excitement in your voice in a while. Now, everybody who listens to this broad these broadcasts know that you are a proud graduate of Howard University. And you so, are a proud graduate of Florida a and There we go. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, there are, <laughs> there's a lot of speculation, but there is a lot that has to happen between now and then. But what we know for sure are the Bison are traveling to Atlanta yeah. and going to try to extend that record for the MEAC. And, you know, and if, if it happens to be Florida A&M versus Howard, then, you know, you keep me in bait, I'll keep you in bait. Okay. You know, we'll do that. Some people ask myself to recuse myself. <laughs> I said, well, if Tiffany Green recuses herself from the call, we can talk about it. But it'll be it'll be marvelous there. It'll be a big game for that. And a, a little, little fact, and we'll go on. A lot of people don't know this. Howard has had at least three mayors of Atlanta have come from Howard University. At least three. I think it's four, but at least three. So we show up in the A. Oh, now we're using a we. One Whoa. time. They're not playing this game Whoa. right now. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that pass complete to David Manigo. And it moves the chains as Florida and with the ball from the 21-yard line. Again, the Rattlers will await who they will play out of the SWAC West. A lot can happen between now. And next weekend, as this one is complete, and into the hands of Jamari A. Sharid, and gang tackle and thrown down at the end, and as the whistles were howling in the air. And some wanted maybe a little extra up, but that's what you do in a rivalry game. This is this is the type of play that you expect. And that's to what I was going to say, Tiffany. You took the words out of my mouth. This is rivalry football. I mean, you know, he's churning his legs. They've got him airborne. Everybody's coming trying to push now. you got this pushing rule that you can do in college football. So at the end of it, you know, you have to finish it. Good 
no call by the officials in my opinion. On second and three, here's Kelvin Dean, and Dean who tripped himself up, but picks up the first down. Could have had more yardage as we've seen a number of players out of the backfield kind of rotate through with some impact transfer. Dean, we saw Yan earlier, but Dean, who had some space along that right side, grew up in Chipley, Florida, but really finished his high school career at Rickards High School before going on to FAU and finally landing at Florida a &M. Play action and great one for Kobe Gross and Gross who hurls a defender. And right now moving forward in the right direction are the Rattlers here on this drive, gain of 13. There are a lot of things to think about. Good job pulling the ball, getting rid of it quick. Utilizing almost a double tight end package with Young and Gross in the game at the same time. The one thing I like to see, I, I thought Yant did some hard running early. You know, when you have so many running backs, sometimes you want to get creative and give them all touches. But I thought Yant, with his size, could be a big force in this game. And here's Dean once more. And Dean showing off some speed and staying on his feet. And finally brought down and out of bounds by Shelton Quarles Jr. But you talk about the size, everybody in that backfield for the Rattlers, 200 pounds or more. And I like this Kelvin Dean saying, take this, Jay Walker. I'm the hot guy right now, showing some good, tough running with some speed and some moves. Give credit to that offensive line, getting that push, opening up the lanes for these running backs. And what you saw right there from Dean, he's a guy that can be a game breaker He's got a couple of years of eligibility left. We mentioned where he played his high school ball. His cousin, Amp Lee, the former running back from Florida State. Got good football in his blood. Musa in the middle, across the middle, and it's complete to Jamari Gassett. Gassett, the speedy receiver who transferred in from Buffalo, a gain of 19 here in the red zone now. Look at his pockets. I mean, that's a clean pocket, allowing him to go from three progression read. If they continue to give time like that to Musa on drop back passes, he will absolutely pick you apart. And Jamari A. Sharid with a short game there. Musa is a guy who, if you give him time and he delivers the ball accurately, he can be ever so dangerous. Why he was selected as the preseason offensive player of the year out of the swack and from your eyes jay is there anybody else that would possibly dethrone him from potentially winning it? the type of season that he had and the number of wins that he's got nobody's coming to mind right now i think he's been as good as advertising he's a quarterback who judged by wins and losses and he's done a great job doing it well, number nine on Kelvin Dean's jersey representing the number of wins Florida a m has had this season. They're only lost this year to an FBS opponent. And right down I-4 against South Florida. But this has been so far a dream season for Florida a and And they've set their sights on trying to make it to the Celebration Bowl. Something that they have come close to a couple of times. The whole line not moving, and everyone was caught off guard for the Wildcats for a second. And Kamari Young, the tight end, who's still on his feet somehow, wrapped up all around his ankles. But a nine-yard gain, and I'm curious for you to break that down when we see it again, Jay Walker. It goes back to that creative play calling by Willie Simmons having played the position. I'm going to sell out like it's going to be a quick sprint right, but it's nothing but a throwback tight end screen. Good job by the offensive line selling it. And the thing that really gets it, your first two steps as a quarterback, when you take that quick sprint action, the defense has to react and then able to find the tight end. I just like, I like those type of plays. You know, there's something unique you don't see too often as a quarterback. You love it when you get to pull it off and it works. We got to credit Ashton Grable, the left tackle, the mid-year signee who joined the program in the spring who helped to create some room for Kamar Young. First and goal. 
And to his left, trying to get around the corner, but tripped up as Jennings as Dears Thomas there to stop him. Short gain of one. It'll bring up second and goal. Florida A&M going to the jumbo package. Bring an extra tight end. Bring one of the larger wide receivers in Dixon on the edge. Mari Young there. Everything, see, this one has to be careful against Florida A&M. Everything says they're getting ready to try and pound the football. But if you scout them out, that lets you know, if you think they're going to pound, they're probably going to try some finesse with some play action. Florida a and spins the timeout, and we will step aside with them as well. Second and goal, and they'll discuss what they want to do. We'll find out what unfolds on the other side. Come back here to Camping World Stadium. Jay Walker, it's 50 Green. Time now for Jay's HBCU Power Rankings. All right, been a long time coming. First time in a while, I'm going to say it. Congratulations, Florida A&M. You have the number one HBCU football team in the country, followed up by North Carolina Central, Jackson State, Howard University, cracks the top five on their way to the Celebration Bowl, and Alabama State, like the job that Eddie Robinson's doing, and I think on the bubble, always got to give credit to Division II Benedict for their perfect regular season. SIAC champions as well, number one seed in the Division II playoffs. You think about Florida A&M, the second longest winning streak in the nation and a chance to make it to 10 wins for the first time since 1999. Here up 7-0 on their in-state rival, Terrell Jennings with the cutback into the end zone and another score for the Rattlers. Well, Terrell Jennings punches it in from three yards out, the strong man flex on the celebration. And Fan Yu, who's won the last two in this series, trying to pack on more. Yeah, missed tackle right there by Conroy Cunningham in the backfield. If you're a defensive lineman, you have to make that tackle to minimize the game. Once he gets by you, there's no second line of defense and able to find the end zone. Cameron Gill is on to attempt the extra point. It's through the uprights and a two touchdown lead for the seventh ranked team in the country, Florida A&M on top here from O-Town. We'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom. Committee chair Blue Corrigan will be on for a live interview. Seven Eastern, it pops off. Meanwhile, there's a sea of orange and green in Camping World Stadium. The Marching 100 getting down. Everybody doing a little bop to it as well. It's always a good sign for Florida A&M or anybody when you can keep the Marching Wildcat band quiet, you can control momentum, and that's what we're seeing Florida A&M do right now. After the score, crowd got into it. They realize they've got their rival on the ropes here early in this contest. You know, Jay, we oftentimes talk so much about the bands, but getting to hear them in broadcast is also a special thing. Got to give a quick shout out to Dr. Shelby Chipman, the director of bands, just recently the honoree in the role of distinction by the Florida Band Masters Association. A huge honor. Here on the return, Darnell Dees out of his own end zone along that left side. It's got some blocking and then he trips up. Dees, who had an excellent return, wanted more. And those are plays there. This is a great design on the fake. Plenty of daylight. You can set up the runners outside, and he starts stumbling. This opportunity for a big return. We appreciate that thunderous sound. 
from the I, stands. Tiff, you put a little, you put a lot of extra on it right now. I tell you that. But I, I did think after hearing them perform like that, I do feel like I would love to hear uh, my man Bullard say, "Ladies and gentlemen." Joe Bullard, yeah. The 100. <laughs> the voice. <laughs> that, 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 that's the only thing that was missing from that performance they did in between. On first and 10, here's Simmons going deep. He's got a man down the seam, but into the hands of the Rattlers. Interception by Eric Smith, his second of the season. So after that great return from Darnell Dees, the Wildcats handed right back over to Florida a &M. Uh, this is what you can't afford to do. Just throw it up for grabs against an aggressive defense. The quarterback just lays it out there. Two Rattlers there to make the play, but Eric Smith comes down with it. Rattlers are striking. The Florida Classic on ESPNU, presented by McDonald's, is brought to you by Oscar Mayer. Keep it Oscar. And inspire sleep apnea innovation. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Welcome back. Over the years, the Florida Classic has drawn in more than 2 million fans. I know that number continues to rise right now. Florida AM with a 14 0 advantage over Bethune Cookman. What they've been able to do is get the Wildcats to turn the ball over. They've taken advantage of those turnovers. And now Eric Smith, the latest, his interception sets up his offense. Florida A&M trots back onto the field, ball in their own 36-yard line. Don't be surprised if the Rattlers take some big shots downfield on first or second down, trying to really make that turnover count. The action from Musa dumps it underneath. There's Kamari Young, and Young, it must be something on the field here today, Jay, because we've seen a number of players lose their footing on the field, pick up a three. And sometimes, you know, you can be a little too fancy. I mean, normally, you, you diagram screens for running backs because they're really good at running in open space like that. And if you've got a tight end that's talented, you can use him. But with all that daylight out there, you have to think, had that been one of the running backs, probably would have been a big play because there was an entourage of blockers out front of Young. We mentioned throughout just the way the tight ends have been used in offenses around the country a lot more steadily is this one in the hands of Marcus Riley and Marcus Riley making a few of his teammates miss he gets it slides up if you will and Marcus Riley with a gain of nine Anderson Clement delivered that hit to him yeah, and that's how you can tell he's the fastest guy on the field you know he was cruising. Watch it when he gets his hand off. Okay, I'm just going to outrun you and turn my shoulders, and then I can dance, and then I can still outrun you to the sideline, showing you the speed, but making it look rather smooth and effortless. With one shoe off. With the shoe off. And still picked up the first down. Musa steps up, delivers it into the hands of Nicholas Dixon, and Dixon is brought down by Clement at the 30-yard line. And another first down for the Rattlers. And good quarterback play here off the play action. This is a double move, and it's not there. But then Dixon settles with the off coverage, finds a little soft spot to the outside, and Musa with the arm strength to get it there. Dixon out of Tallahassee, Florida. Played his high school ball at Godby. The question is, can Robert Wimberley's defense or Bethune Cookman come up with the stop here? Some more trickeration is into the hands of Gasson trying to put on some moves. A little cutback action and brought down as the helmet pops off for one of the defenders. That was Steven Sparrow who has his helmet cut off, cut uh, come off. But we're talking about that stop. Eddie Walls, number nine in maroon and gold, was a player that Coach Woody mentioned 
needs to step up and have a big game. They need a defensive line to be disruptive, you know, do what aggressive defensive linemen can do. And anybody that can cause some chaos in the backfield, I think one of the keys with stopping Florida and m when they've struggled is when you can get Jeremy Musa off his spot. Don't allow him to sit comfortably in the pocket. Don't allow all this creative play call to become a factor. That's how you slow down Florida and m but haven't seen much penetration from the defensive line of Bethune Cook in this game. And it's an area where they've excelled this season, second in the nation in tackles for a loss. It was a loss of two there and a timeout taken by Florida A&M. And we will do the same as the Rattlers are driving. Can the Wildcats come up with a stop here? We'll find out when we return. Up on the All-State Halftime Report with Kevin Connors and Sam Ocho to help scores and highlights from around the top 25. Plus, gosh, QB comparisons to Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts to QBs from last year's. So we'll be interested to see how that plays out. And, of course, you can't forget the Pac-12 showdown. Top 11. Number five, Washington going to Oregon State tonight at 7.30 on ABC. Curious about that comparison. I mean, I see the obvious one. They're probably going to compare Caleb Williams to Patrick Mahomes. But Jalen Hurts is so strong. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I don't First thing that comes to my mind, I think Hurts is strength. I mean, he's a strong runner, strong everything. So kid down at LSU, not as strong. Did you know Jalen Hurts was a state champion weightlifter in no. Texas? In no. Texas. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so built like a fullback. <laughs> Back here in Orlando. Second and 12 as we're just about set to resume play on the field. Florida a with the ball. The Wildcat 32 yard line. Musa hit as he throws, and it's dropped by Nicholas Dixon, who was open, couldn't hang on to it. And it's third down. Yeah, that's a catch that should have been made there. Musa got hit, but still delivered the ball. That was throwable. So they bring in Fant to make you think they're going to run with the power backfield. Good job of penetration by Cunningham getting a hit on the quarterback. But that's one of the things you have to do. You have to get Musa off his spot. Don't allow him to settle in the pocket and let him know that a hit is coming to speed up his anticipation. 50% on third downs in this one. They flick it out to Leland Wilhoy, and Wilhoy with some speed, but there's a penalty marker that flies out as well. Hold it. Offense, number 71. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. And anytime you're going to try and get that outside of the pocket, that swing pass there for the screen and the left tackle, Ashton Grable, you see him number 71 trying to get that angle of pursuit on Cunningham. And you, know, you start to question, did he need to hold him? But when you do that from that left tackle position, Christian's going to call it nine out of 10 times on you. Grable. We've called his name a couple of times, although we've seen good protection up front for Florida AM and keeping Jeremy Musta upright. And instead of accepting the penalty, they have instead declined it, which makes sense. Florida AM was short of it, and so the field goal unit's going to come on, and Cameron Gillis is going to attempt the 44-yarder. Yeah, see, if you take the penalty back him up 10 yards, I don't think they're going for the field goal on you. But a little bit Get unconventional approach by Raymond Woody as he declines the penalty. It's up, has enough leg, and it's through. So Cameron Gillis matches his season long of 44 yards and a 17-0 lead. For FAMU. And that's what a good football team does. You decline the penalty, we make you pay for not backing us up. 
And Florida A&M able to extend their lead here in this first half. Well, Jay, there was a stretch of time where Bethune-Cookman really ran away with this series, winning eight over the last 10. But in the last two years, it's fallen in favor of FAMU. And Jeremy Musa and Jalen McLeod going back and forth. They made several trips to the end zone five. In fact, as FAMU capped off their ninth straight win of the season, downing the Wildcats 41 to 20. Among all of the, the, the fun hype around it, they do a Florida Classic luncheon where the coaches participate and go back and forth, the ADs and the presidents as well. It's just a fun smack talking time where the teams are there, the cheerleading squads are there as well, alumni, and a uh, few words are exchanged there, Jay. You know, you, you think about some of the great rivalries in, in college football, not just HBCU football, and you can point to this one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I think of HBCU rivalry, some of the legendary ones, you know, family, Bethel Cookman, Grambling versus Southern, Jackson State versus Alcorn. Those are probably the big major ones there. Then you got the one up in the Northeast where you got Howard and Hampton and then North Carolina Central North Carolina and Ag Eagle. So you can't forget about the granddaddy of them all and Grambling Southern. That's a huge one. You said that, Jay? Nah, oh, okay. That, yeah. Okay, you, you were like that's first. <laughs> All start. Offense. Number 56. Five yard penalty. It's first down. As you always know, and, you know, just to be honest, this is the first time in quite a while that there's really been nothing riding on this game except for bragging rights. And you like the fact that that did not deter Florida A&M from realizing they have to take care of business. And they're playing like they're the better football team right now. Feeling the pressure, but escaping is Walter Simmons the third. The shoestring tackle by Johnny Chaney Jr. And some laundry flies out, too. Back near the 15. And early indication from, by Tony Ross it's going to push the Wildcats back. Holding. Offense. Number 79. 10-yard penalty. Replay. First down. In our pregame conversation with, you know, Coach Woody said, well, hey, can you beat the Rattlers? I mean, you know how important this game is. He says, look, we've got to be laser focused. We've got to have great attention to detail. You got to clean up those types of miscues as Jimmy Robinson, the third, sees a gang of green jerseys bring him down. Deco Wilson was the first there. You know, and I think for Bethune Cookman, you know, your hope is they were down 14 0 to Alabama AM. And they came back and ran away with that game, beat them easily. So once they figure out how to fight you, they do show some fight. I mean, this is the team that hasn't been blown out of a lot of games. You know, all season long, you know, early on, they lost some close games. So they're still learning how to win these type of football games. Right now, they face a tough team out there in Florida a and that's playing with a lot of confidence. Look out. The missed tackle, and Davino Ellington is making the Rattler defense pay on second and 21. A huge pickup for Ellington and this Wildcat offense, a gain of 31. Just when you lull them to sleep, you know, they make a play. One of the athletes makes Eric Smith miss the tackle on the edge and able to hurt you with the explosive plays. Now from their own 45-yard line after their longest play of the day. Jimmy Robinson, the third, with not much room to run. And you would be wise to, to take your time right now if you're a Bethune Cook. You know, I'd get up to the line of scrimmage like I'm going to snap it, but I'm going to let that clock wind all the way down because you don't want Florida A&M to start calling some timeouts to decide they want to try and get some points before the half. Well, Bethune Cookman 
will receive it to start the second half. The pass out and the open field tackle made by Eric Smith to try to make up for that missed tackle on the other sideline brings down the ball carrier. It's third down. And surprise Florida and him not calling the timeout here. Try and force Bethune Cookman to convert. And now if you're Bethune Cookman, if you convert, you're thinking, hey, hurry up offense. Let's try and maybe get a field goal try before the half. They have all three timeouts. Yeah. Offense, number 66. Five yard penalty. It's third down. They just nothing smooth about this offense. Nothing smooth about it, but they do find a way to make some plays, and it's going to be a matter of will they be able to make enough big plays in this game to get back into it. New characteristics already five penalties for Bethune-Cookman here in this first half. They're usually a very disciplined team as that one is overthrown. Tink Boyd was the nearest Wildcat receiver in the area. And great defense by Kendall Bowler. Bowler, one of the better defensive backs in all of FCS football, had Tink Boyd blanketed in his coverage. Raymond Woody Jr. said, hey, look, we've got to figure out a way to finish. That's what's the important part for us, putting together a full 60 minutes. He referenced the close games they've been a part of. Lost to Jackson State by a touchdown. Alabama State within a touchdown as well. Texas Southern by a field goal before we saw them get their first SWAC win. And the same for Woody against Mississippi Valley State. And bobbled and muffed, but recovered by Sharid. And with 41 seconds remaining, Florida a &M will get the ball back. And Cherie saw that one bounce, had to go through his hands, and was fortunate to fall on it. And actually a pretty good play by Cherie. I think the ball might have hit his up man because he was going to let it roll through, but when he thought it might have hit one of his blockers, he decided to try and recover the football. Heads up play. And Willie Simmons... See what he decides to call here. Likely will keep the ball on the ground. Or do you think he'll be aggressive here? Uh, if he gets a look he likes. And right now, man-to-man -man coverage all the way across the board. He may try something tricky. Instead, the delayed handoff to Will Hoyt. That'll be. That'll take us and to that the will do. Instead, Bethune-Cookman, who has all three timeouts, decides to spin one here. Well, you got him backed up, and maybe you can get a couple stops and maybe set up a pump return. Well, the success that we've seen under head coach Willie Simmons, you mentioned just the way They've been on the cusp and have been close to clinching a berth for the Cricket Celebration Bowl. You think back to 2018, they were one win away from there. Then they had that self-imposed postseason ban in 2019. And in the last couple of years, they ran into a very strong Jackson State team, one of the best in the country at the time, led by Coach Prime. But now, what a &M feels like it's their chance, it's their opportunity, and Leland Wilhoyt with an excellent run, and Wilhoyt crossed the 35-yard line, kept speeding and scooting through 24 yards later, first down and 22 seconds remaining. Joshua Thornhill was the Wildcat to stop him, but now, do you try to take a shot here, Jay? If you can, if you get this one-on-one -on -one matchup, maybe a 50-50 ball, if you see a, something next to like. But I, mean, I really thought that Florida a was content to go in up by 17, but after Bethune called the timeout, then you get a big run. They said, hey, let's take a look at this, and how many more yards do we need to gain? And 
And they're still looking at about 35 yards they need to gain, so you need some type of big play. throws this man it's third and ten and a little tussle after the play and flags fly as some extracurricular going on up front between the Rattlers and the Wildcats a little frustrating I think both teams just kind of want to just get to the locker room right now and if you're Bethune Cook you want to regroup gather and realize that down by 17 in Florida and them, you got to say we want to keep putting the pressure on. But I really don't see much happening here before we get to halftime. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness against the offense number 76. So be a 15 yard penalty. Third down. That going against Cameron Coven up front, one of the old linemen for Willie Simmons Rattlers. And so he'll be content to likely run the ball and try to take it into the locker room. Off and big tackle made by Laquan Johnson and once more there's a lot of pushing and shoving and talking down there on the field and they still have okay now they've blanked out the clock all zeros on the play clock and you see Laquan Johnson doing a little jawing there with Charles Davis in what is a heated rivalry. We mentioned bragging rights on the line in the Sunshine State. Both teams will retreat to their locker rooms as the officials man the field to make sure everyone goes to their respective corners. Florida A&M through a few punches in the first half, up 17-0. Now the bands will take the field. You can see their full performance over on ESPN3. By McDonald's. Halftime here at the Florida Blue Florida Classic from Orlando, Florida. 17-point advantage for the seventh-ranked team in FCS, FAMU over Bethune-Cookman as... We say hello and welcome you back inside, inside the booth. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green. That first half, obviously favoring Florida A&M. What do they do well? well? They play like the number one team in the country in HBCU football, top ten overall. And that was established control of the line of scrimmage. What do they do? They stopped the run defensively. They kept Bethune-Cookman's offense on its heels all day, became opportunistic. And whenever Bethune made a mistake, the Rattlers made them pay. And when you think about a rivalry game, you mentioned it already, Jay, not necessarily anything on the line outside of bragging rights. Has it lived up to the billing? Because we've seen a little chippiness on the field so far. Yeah, the end of the half really got, you know, Bethune-Cookman and fam, they got frustrated. You can tell these two teams want to get after it, but it just seems like Bethune-Cookman is not operating with enough weapons to take into that type of fight. And Florida A&M is letting them know, hey, we're bigger than you, we're faster than you, we're stronger than you. And it's been a great battle at halftime as well. Currently on the field under the direction of Dr. Shelby R. Chipman, the marching 100. football game going on but there are also blows being traded at halftime between the bands and we'll get into that a little bit more in the second half jay walker as we welcome you back to camping world stadium here 
And uh, it's been an entertaining first half all the way through the halftime show, Jay. But when we look back at, you know, the first half between the FAMU and Bethune-Cookman, it was an opportunistic defense for the Rattlers that helped them get on the board first. Yeah, you know, and that's what Florida AM does. They have one of the top rushing defenses in the country. And one thing Bethune-Cookman does not do is throw the football well, but they were force feeding the run and they had some early success, but never enough to go all the way downfield to sustain a long drive. And that's why I think it's really going to be an uphill battle for the Wildcats. As we take a look at the highlights there in the first half, in terms of what you were talking about, Jay, there was a bad exchange and taking advantage was Isaiah Major on the public recovery. And that's what you have to do. Then whenever you get a turnover, they went to their big running back camp, the transfer from the University of Nebraska scored early and Florida and them knew right away that they had a sense that they could kind of control the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Musa finding Jamari Gassett setting things up once more as the air attack was working and then Terrell Jennings was able to punch it in. And anytime you can run the football, the Florida a and they're a pass-first offense that likes to run, but they've got some dogs and you see the numbers there. They really just took advantage of everything. 100 yards rushing already in the first half for Florida a &M. That's a good start. They're very difficult to beat when they're that productive. All right, we'll have more here as the third quarter action will get underway when we come back here to Camping World Stadium as we'll see who's going to win this second half between this Sunshine State rivalry. I, I want them to extend the halftime. That battle to band oh. was, was crucial right there. It was really good. I'm surprised they're not doing the overtime, have a draw, but both teams sounded really good. Well, Jay, you had the opportunity to watch halftime, and obviously Venom, the Rattler mascot, getting down. But but your thoughts, because, you know, these are two really well-respected bands. You mentioned that already. The band directors, Donovan Wells for the Marching Wildcats. Dr. Wells has done a tremendous job. Shelby Chipman, Dr. Shelby Chipman on the other side for Florida A&M. I would like to get your thoughts on halftime. I think it's like the contrast in styles. I mean, I think Bethune-Cookman is a very active band. They like to move around, be active and stuff. And I think Florida A&M, it, it's really about that sound, like that sound. They want to sound better than everybody. But I think Bethune, you know, they play some hits. So I think the contrasting styles, what do you like there? You know, Bethune-Cookman has dancing girls, Florida A&M. Does not have dance to you. So it's kind of what do you want? But fam, you was like, we're all about the music. We don't need the distraction. Well, sometimes I like a little distraction. I like a little bling. I like a little. I want those rims to spin. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know what I appreciated about it was that you know. Bethune Cookman came out, they threw their shot, they spelled FAMU on the field, and then they turned it into something else. They changed the letter and it changed the meaning of FAMU on the other side. FAMU coming back with BC. Z, I can say that one on air because it's not a, a bad word, but, uh, <laughs> but but that's the fun that you anticipate, and that's the type of back and forth. This one goes out of bounds. And, and the so, last point I'll say on it, yes, mm -hmm. the BCZZ was good, but when Bethune-Cookman changed that spelling of FAMU, that was the biggest roar of the whole halftime. You, you, will you admit that? It was a huge roar. Indeed, it was. <laughs> okay. Yes. Stop right there. <laughs> So let's get to some football. So if it, I'm not saying they won halftime. No, right we, now, we, we, we can't determine that. Yeah, we can't determine that. that. But what Bethune Cookman needs to do is try to win this football game. And they got a donut on the scoreboard right now. You said, hey, look, the offense may not necessarily be pretty, but what type of adjustments can they make or what can they do better here in this second half? We'll find out first play in the pass out to Dakari Allen Johnson, a wide receiver screen and a solid pickup Isaiah Major on the stop. You know, I'm going to go against the grain. I think what they need to do is show that they can run the football a little bit and run their quarterback a little bit more because if they can get one nice drive, which I don't see happening, they haven't shown that yet, but use the quarterback as a runner and try and get a number count to show that you can run the football. But see, when they run like that, damn you, they make a killing off of that. Those are just dead plays. They put you behind the sticks. Here on third and five, you talked about Walter Simmons the third being that dual threat guy. We've seen him with 
couple of runs here today. He's got the ability to embellish or elongate plays. Two for seven on third downs. And again, we see Fam Yu a little overly eager on defense, jumping off sides. Offside. Defense number three. Coming in the neutral zone, come in contact. It's a five yard penalty. The penalty results on the first down. And those are the types of plays that Bethune Cookman has to take advantage of. We saw that a few times back in the first half, and it granted them a first down here. That one batted down by Isaiah Major, who was all in the face of Walter Simmons the third, and that play was whistled dead, even though Major finished off the play as if it hadn't been. And this goes back to that defensive line. I mean, as a quarterback, when you can't even look at all the green jerseys that were around him. That's major coming from a linebacker position, and you've got defensive linemen there. I always say, if you can't feel comfortable in the pocket with your feet, protecting your feet, then you become an ineffective passer. Here's Jimmy Robinson, the third. And Jimmy Robinson, the third, who was thrust down to the turf, by Allen Smith Jr., but just gonna be stopped. Maybe just a football length from a first down. You see towards the end of this run here, Smith Jr. plays that fang position for Florida A&M. Little suplex there on the top. Body slam. Simmons held up at the extra effort, reaching the ball out, and I think they're going to give him the first down as he was held up at the point of attack immediately by Major, but the extension of that arm is going to be good enough to keep the drive going. Yeah, good recognition by Simmons. The quarterback realized he's going to be a little bit short. Isaiah Major was there to fill the hole in a hurry, but he stretched the football out to get the needed yardage and Heads up play. Going for it. Has Davino Ellington, Trink Boyd rather, trailing out of bounds. Yeah, I thought they would have been holding here on this route here. But a good job by Boyd getting behind the defensive back. The throw was out of bounds and really not catchable. They're not going to call pass interference on a ball that lands four yards out of bounds. Second and ten. Walter Simmons, the third, who has some room and wisely slides Ooh. down just a couple of yards short. Yeah, you know. He had it, but he started his slide. And that's the rule in, as a quarterback. Once you start to give yourself up wherever you land, they're going to put it back two to three yards on you. So he landed on that 35-yard line, but they mark him at the 37 because of where he started. And the flag flies out here on the play. Florida A&M jumps offside again. Offside. Defense number 92. Five yard penalty. The penalty results in the first down. You remember in the first half when every Bethune Cookman made a mistake, Florida A&M made him pay? Well, if you're Bethune Cookman, you have to say, Florida A&M is making some mistakes. Let's make them pay. They're giving us first downs. You've got this drive here. You must put points on the board to make the Rattlers pay for some of these defensive mistakes. Simmons once more looking to scramble. He's brought down and a great play by Johnny Cheney Jr., the linebacker. And this right here, this is, you know, call a little bit of sandlot football here. They're dropping back. He's looking at the line, not looking downfield, and that just happens when the pressure is constantly in your face. You asked me a recommendation, call a screen pass. And Florida A&M is so aggressive with their D-linemen trying to collapse the pocket. 
Why not set him up with a little slip screen? That ball may have been deflected at the line of scrimmage and wobbled its way short of the receiver. And it's third and 14. Alan Smith there, once again, making a play. That fang backer, the end guy kind of disruptor. In that same position as Isaiah Land, who's now in the NFL and is a Buck Buchanan Award winner here on third and long. Tim Cookman has four wide receivers and Simmons aligns with Major and goes down. It, 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 we talk about, you know, reading coverages and going through your progressions there. And in that case, Simmons pulled the ball so fast, you almost thought this was a draw play. Uh, he, he, he wasn't looking to settle in the pocket whatsoever. I just think the constant pressure is really starting to get to the sophomore quarterback from Orange Park, Florida. Again, it's been a number of different faces there at the QB position for the Wildcats on the punt. There's Frederick and into the end zone for the touchback. After that 35-yard punt, it'll be Florida A&M football when we return here to beautiful, sunny Florida. Kick off your week 11 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. And it's the rematch of Super Bowl 57. Eagles, Chiefs, Kelsey versus Kelsey, Hurts versus Holmes. 8 Eastern on ABC ESPN. And obviously you can check out Peyton and Eli once again on ESPN2. And... Kansas City Swifties, huh? I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I didn't know they were undefeated when she shows up, so obviously take care of some season tickets there. Look at the offensive productivity there, so, you know, athletes are very superstitious. I'm sure right now the whole Kansas City Chiefs organization, they're Swifties right now. <laughs> right. You know, Taylor Swift is going to be coming in from, like, South America to make sure that she can be in attendance for that game to try to extend that streak a little bit more. First, I don't know how I felt about all that, mm -hmm. but when you show me those numbers, now I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, she, she now you believe it, huh? She needs to be in the game. <laughs> we talk about streaking. Let's go to NM, who's won their last eight games. And a dangerous pass out to Sharid because right there, the DB was reading the entire way. Joshua Thornhill, excuse me, the free safety. Thornhill was waiting on that throw. And they're gonna lose yardage there. I think it would be important for Florida and then get off to a good start in this half and then have an opportunity to rest some of your stars. I don't know how Bethune Cook is gonna manufacture some offense against you. So when you have an offense that's struggling like that, get your offense going and eliminate hope early in the second half. So patient running by Dean, and Dean is stopped before he can move through the hole too much more by Eddie Walls, the third. Now third down the line again, the 30-yard line. And this is where you wanna, who's gonna step up, make a play? Obvious passing situation. Who can win their one-on-one -on -one matchup on the line of scrimmage or in the secondary make a play to get the ball back for your offense? And Musa directing traffic, making sure everybody knows what they need. As the play clock was winding down, and Musa zips it through the hands of Jamari Gassett. And fourth down upcoming for the Rattlers. And yeah, when you have a nice pocket like this, I think he releases this ball too early. Let him round out the break, and you can lead him one or two steps there. Maybe 
just a little bit of that timing still off a little bit from the week away from the offense. I think Moose has looked okay, but he hasn't looked sharp. He hasn't been sharp there. We've seen him with precision accuracy and picking apart secondaries, but that's not been the case today. The quick three and out for FAMU, Will Hoyt. Put it away. Fair catch as the film Cookman Wildcat backs into his teammate, the 43-yard punt, and BCU will start with good field position when we come back here to Camping World Stadium for the Florida Classic. Over their in-state rival, Bethune Cookman University, but hey, right now, it's time for Jay's Give Me Five, and I'm gonna give out some awards, Tiffany Green. Is that all right with you? Absolutely. How about this? Coming in number five, the team of the year is Benedict College. They went undefeated during the regular season, ranked in the top five in Division II football. Good job there, Shinnis Barrett. Four, Jerwan Howe, Rookie of the Year, running back South Carolina State. We saw him rush for 260-something yards. We saw him give the business to North Carolina Central. He's a special talent. Eric Hunter is my defensive player of the year. Morgan State, much improved. They've got defense, offensive to work on, but Eric Hunter was a big piece of that. And Davius Richard is my player of the year. We know the story of Davis Richard. And Rattlers, yes, Willie Simmons is my coach of the year. So I'm going to give you love there. Willie's doing a good job, but don't look at that on the bubble. Close your eyes. Because my band of the year is the human jukebox of Southern University. Some of Jay's little awards I'm giving out there. Jay, I'm going to chime in with Tiff's two cents. Impact transfer of the year goes to Marcus Riley. We denoted his story earlier. Started at Bethune. Cookman was a playmaker there and been that way with the Rattlers as well. Miguel Rijo, an awesome story, defensive lineman. Story of the year, had a language barrier, had to sit out in high school, came over to the Dominican, Dominican Republic, a baseball player, a football player. Love it. You know what? I'm, I'm going to get you. That. that could be a category we just start monitoring every year, the impact transfer of the year. With the transfer portal out there, and I, Mike, Marcus Riley, really good selection there. We saw the job that he did. I mean, very first time he touched the football in a Florida A&M uniform. Didn't he return the kick down in the uh, yeah. in the classic down there in uh, Miami? So, good category there. And I like your awards and honors. And I don't think anybody could be mad with the human jukebox from Southern University either. Jimmy Robinson, the third, can't be mad with this run right here. My boy was turning it up. Brought down by Kendall Bowler. But a nice little spark needed there, pickup of 20. And that's what we said. He was going to have to figure out a way to get tough yards after contact and get some explosive plays to help out this offense, get some points there. He's the one that could be a difference maker. And Bethune, uh oh, you hear that? I, I told, when you start hearing that band for Bethune Cookman, this football team gets hyped up off of that theme music. It's the Vaughnett Let's Go Wildcats chant. Dre Jones makes the tackle. This this is this is kind of the trading of the blows back and forth in the stands. You try to get in a little something, something in between plays. And, and if they hit a big play right now, pick up a first down, then that band, they're gonna go crazy. I mean, they're waiting. And the pass complete, but Maybe on Moore was driven down quickly by Lovey Jenkins. A loss of one. A great individual play by Lovey Jenkins. Just blowing up that tight end screen they tried to do to Moore. Oh, Cookman just struggling to move the ball every time they cross midfield against Florida A&M. Finger falls down, the pass complete to Tink Boyd. In the spot right there at the sticks. Are they going to give it to him or are they going to mark him short? Oh, they're going to oh, mark him a little bit short. It's fourth down, tough spot there. In an obvious situation that Raymond Woody Jr. would try to go for it here. Well, they're not even going to give him the measurement, so the clock is, is winding, so they need to 
Make up their mind what play they're going to call right now. This won't be an easy half a yard to get. Before the play clock expires, I think Bethune-Cookman may have gotten a timeout. The previous play is on the further review for the spotting of the ball. So they are going to take a peek at it, replay official Vernon Brakefield, and this crew will look it over upstairs, and his momentum is carrying him backwards from the sticks. Really hard to tell or determine there, Jay. Yeah, and I think, you know, using the rules and video evidence, I don't think there's enough there to overturn a call that was made on the field when you know, you're talking about maybe you know, six or seven inches either way. So this may be a tough break for Bethune Cookman. I can't imagine them overturning that spot. It was pretty close, and you got to look where his knee was down when he caught the ball. And, I just don't know if you see something conclusive to say that the referee got it wrong. Let's take a look here. This may be a good view. Knees down. See, knees not down yet. Going back. Knees down. Where's the ball? Right uh, on that 37 yard. I mean, it's so close. Like It's going to be really tough yeah. to tell or anything, as you mentioned, to say there's conclusive or indisputable evidence to, yeah. to change the current spot of the football, and for cl clarification, Bethune Cookman did not have to spend a timeout. The review came from upstairs. It seemed like he was right about that 18 yard line, but you know the referee might have put him at the you know 18 and a half, or it needs to be 18. But we'll see what they decide. After further review, the ruling on the field has been reversed. The spot should be the 17-yard line. It should be a first down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it results in a first down that plays out well for the Wildcats, and they keep on moving the ball. Keep the drive alive. And one of the few times we actually saw Simmons deliver a ball on time, it was a timing route with the out route able to convert on a big third down and after the Phil Cookman fresh set of downs Let's see what the offensive coordinator Joe Gerabino dials up tucks it and runs everyone's giving chase and Simmons stretches out for the end zone they're going to say he was out at about the two or three one yard line, three yard line, they say. Yeah, good job. You know, overload the body count, get your quarterback involved in the running game. Clearly he stepped out there. But big play for the Wildcats. Bethune Cookman inching closer to the end zone, trying to erase the goose egg off the scoreboard. They go for it, and right there, not go for it, but trying to run with. Simmons and C, Sharif C says no sir. I think it's going to be almost impossible for Bethune Cookman to run for this touchdown. I mean, FAMU is geared up for this one. They live for these moments. You have to come up with some type of passing play. I think you're better off taking two 50 50 balls in the end zone than wasting downs trying to run at Florida AM with their defensive line right now backed up. We'll push back four yards after that play. They're going to try to keep it on the ground. That's Jimmy Robinson, Don't waste the, time. the third. <laughs> and he gets back to the five. And Stanley Mentor was there. They are just really good in short yardage run defense. We'll take a take a page from Willie Simmons' playbook. You know, give an exotic formation, fake it one direction, go another. But in this situation, you, know, you have to like the advantage of this Florida a and defense. They send Ellington. Motion with one-on-one coverage. Bowler 
And a lot of contact there with Jalen Brown as a flag flies out as well. And you like that. Yeah, I thought you were better off taking a jump ball attempt, 50-50 ball, rather than trying to run at him. And you see he actually comes down pass with the ball out of bounds with the Defense. pass interference. So Number three. fresh set of downs. The in the end zone. The ball will be spotted on the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Bowler never turned his head around to even see where the ball was. And you mentioned <laughs> starting with first and goal here for Bethune Cookman. And this will not be an easy two yards to get <laughs> still. You need two yards. It may take them two plays to do it. We'll try to go to Jalen Brown again. This time Bowler breaks off and backs it away. And they exchange some words afterwards. Second and goal. Do you like the decision there, though, to try no. to throw it up on first and goal? Not, not when you need, you know, if you know you need two yards, and I'm challenging my line, give me one yard, one yard. I don't think you get it all one chunk inside, and you don't want to risk a tackle for a loss, but I want to run something downhill, give the ball to drops, and tell them, we just need a yard, yard and a half, and then we can pick it up on third down. This is the moment okay, he up. loves it, and... Blowing it up right there. Isaiah Major was there. He has just been all over the field here in this one. A loss of four. You know, we said it wouldn't be easy. He just shot the gap and timed it up perfectly from his Mike linebacker position. Major's been a great football player for the Rattlers. And now third and goal. Dark Cloud defense trying to preserve their shutout. Wildcats looking for their first score. Simmons stays on his feet, keeps it up to the back of the end zone, and contact there Whoa. with the flag. Bowler once again on the coverage. This time, Tink Boyd was the receiver. Did, did you see it? I mean, I, I missed it. I was following the ball, so I didn't see it, but they threw it. I mean, he wasn't even ready. That ball was snapped early. And Good athleticism by Simmons. Makes a throw just to give him a chance. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know there because it, it appeared that Bowler was actually in front of Boyd and he had the opportunity to make the play on the ball. Pass interference. Defense. Number eight. Oh, that one goes on. The ball will be spotted at the two yard line. Automatic first down. Eric Smith, who was the defender who was right in front of bowler this ball's not going for him yeah. you know if it's a hold you call a hold but once that ball's in the air you call you have to make the pass interference call on where the ball's intended to go tough break for throw they flip it over to the car Allen Johnson another penalty marker flies out and they try the jet sweep and flags keep on a flying and you just have a feeling this, this penalty is gonna be on Bethune Cook just because you know that was a suspect call there. Balance it out a little bit. Illegal shift. <laughs> Offense. Two players moving at the same time. The five yard penalty. First down. Tried to do a little jet sweep, but a great job by Javon Morgan. Fighting off a block, making the tackle. Most exciting part of the ball game so far in this series. Dropping back to pass. Has a man open and Robinson couldn't haul it in. It was there. And this is good quarterback play. This is a retreat step. He took a retreat step just so he could get that pass off. And Robinson not able to hold on. Probably would have made it to the end zone or gotten close. Twelfth play of the drive coming up here. And Ryan Smith, the defensive coordinator for Florida AM, out on the 10 yard line, try to get that timeout. Meanwhile, Willie Simmons having a quick conversation with the official. Second and goal for Bethune Cookman. Can they get it in the end zone?
tonight. It's a back 12 showdown. Number five, Washington, taking on the 11th rank Oregon State crew out of Corvallis. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Oh, the college football awards are coming up. We got a spotlight on a few players as we approach the December 8th event. Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Penix Jr., Ade Barron also in the mix out of Texas. A number of excellent players from around the country. Remember, you can catch it on December 8th over on ESPN. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green back here with you. Jay, what's been so fun is all of the wonderful classic moments that we have been a part of and, and witnessed and called. But I think back to some of the names like uh, an Alan Suber out of Bethune-Cookman or Jaquay Nunley from Florida a and I mean, we could go on and on and keep listening. Raymond Woody Jr. was like, hey, yo, I participated in the classic and I faced off against a guy by the name of Earl Holmes. <laughs> The hitman. The hitman, Earl Holmes. Here on second and goal. Just over two minutes to go in the third quarter. And all over the receiver was Morgan. No penalty marker flies out, and it's third and goal. And Morgan's looking around like, oh, okay, I didn't get flagged for that one. I thought he might have gotten there a little bit early on this crossing route. <laughs> he didn't give him a chance to catch that. <laughs> he looked, okay, I got away with one. And every now and then the ball bounces in your direction. Move the pocket. You got to roll your quarterback out. Give him a little RPO run pass option. There's no threat to the outside divider. And there's Allen Smith Jr. There's an opening there. And he hits it to the end zone. He took the punishment from Deco Wilson, spun him into the end zone, and Bethune Cookman's on the board. When we say their offense isn't pretty, but it's a play like this. When they lull you to sleep, you think you've got them contained, and then the athleticism and the will just shows up and makes an appearance. And Bethune Cookman with their first touchdown of the day. is up and the point after attempt is good a guy like walter simmons the third one of the leaders he's developing into that raymond woody jr told us he's on their leadership council and there he's able to get bethune cookman on the board it was because he was able to elaborate and embellish on that play well, let's see who's bringing the flavor tonight. Brought to you by McDonald's. Fan Fest from earlier today. A number of vendors outside the stadium. And of course, the showtime at halftime with the bands. Fans certainly enjoying it. The World Court in attendance. And Drum Major Mickey stopped by to make an appearance. We'll see him in Atlanta for the Cricket Celebration Bowl. And Jay, we had the opportunity to be a part of our the Fan Fest and Black College Live was out there. You know, I was most excited about Trina, Trina was taking the Trina. stage. You, yeah, I'm, I'm a Florida, Florida girl. girl. You're a yes. Florida girl. But also Jermaine yeah, Dupree, the I legendary Jermaine Dupree. Dupree, also took the Pepsi stage. Here on the return. And a short pickup from Oxendine. But all of the celebration that goes on around a classic game like this and the different fan engagement that takes place as well, always a lot of fun. Thank goodness the weather held up. I mean, it had been bad weather the previous two days down here in Orlando, but when the sun came out today, so did the fans. And, you know, another little unique tradition. For Bethune Cookman, as we look, every classic they wear brand new helmets. So they've got a I forget the gentleman's name, but he's a 
sponsor of the program, and he gets some new helmets every year for the Classic. And this year, a little bit different variety. Got a, a scratch claw print on it and then a number on the other side. Carry up ahead, short game on the play. set of downs right here is pretty important for Florida A&M. You know, they've been in control the whole time, but now the Rattlers got the score. I mean, gave up a score, but Bill Cookman has a little hope in their offense and trying to see if the defense can come up with something. Now the last time as Musa completes the pass and Nicholas Dixon steps out of bounds right near First down marker. And those are the type of plays that I think Bethune Cookman needs to incorporate in their offense. Where pre snap read, guys playing off coverage, the DB can't be right. You can either run a hitch route on him or you can run a go route. But it's a timing throw. Musa knew where he was going with that football before he said hike. And that's a timing offense with rhythm. Got him. The charge was coming. Whoa. And then Eddie Walls, the third coming in. Uh, lay down the ball carrier but Dearis Thomas was first loss of one and that's going to bring up fourth and short great defensive effort here blew oh. it up right there from Thomas Yant shakes him off a little bit and then there's walls yeah, he timed up the blitz and the snap count perfectly and look at the athleticism <laughs> by wall that's 260 pound defensive end just jumping up off his back it looks like coach Simmons gonna let this thing go into the fourth quarter Three quarters in the books from the Florida Classic, and fourth quarter is coming up. The bands who were in action earlier are going to try to drive things on home. Coming up. The Florida Classic on ESPNU is presented by McDonald's. The SWAC championship pitcher got a whole lot clearer this evening as Prairie View A&M will represent the West Division after their win over Alabama State. They will meet Florida A&M in Tallahassee for the SWAC championship game Saturday, December 2nd over on ESPN2 at 4 p.m. And a little bit of a rematch there. Those teams met earlier in the year and Florida A&M Put it on them pretty good, but I'm sure Bubba McDowell will have the Panthers ready. May not be as intimidated by Bragg's and Bragg Stadium there in Tallahassee as they were the first time playing them. It was a Florida A&M homecoming, wasn't it? It was homecoming. homecoming so. It was a 45 decision. 45-7 decision a few weeks back, but obviously things can change with so much riding on the line. Well, folks, this is the scene that we had outside of Camping World Stadium. Our Black College Live show was taped. The Bad Cats stopped by to perform, and yeah, we'll be at the SWAC Championship. Black College Live, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. We will be there from the Pepsi stage. Jay Walker with all the fields from the capital city of here in Florida. And I was surprised, you know, we do this game and everybody knows you're Miss Rattler, but the Thune Cookman folks love you too. <laughs> they, they love you too, so what good showing talk out about there. The, the rivalry, like th there is a sisterliness that happens. We're, we're sister schools. Here on first down the run by Jimmy Robinson, the third. And a pickup of five there. And Florida a &M right now needs to avoid the big play. You know, if Bethune-Cookman gets two or three yards on running plays, you take that, put them in third and down passing situations. But you just get the feeling in, in these games before, we've seen it where, you know, Bethune makes it ugly, they fight you, and then they hit you with a big play. As Jimmy Robinson goes 
run it off the field with something wrong with his hand, but I still go back to Lamb, you keep everything in front of you. You need to do solid tackling. Simmons delivers, standing tall, running up the ladder was Allen Johnson. Great catch by Johnson, pickup of 10. And time now for the All-State good hands play, and that's what you saw just right there in the hands of Dakari Allen Johnson with that great grab. And bouncing off the tackle, that's Basil. Javonsley Basil with his first carry of the game. And Basil had to learn the hard way, you know, what, what Jimmy Robinson already knew. You, you get basically one cut against this Florida a and defensive line, and then you go north-south. He tried to dance a little bit, a little bit of a jitterbug in the backfield. Nicknamed JoJo. Basil back there again. Play action pass, giving chase Trey Jones. And the pass incomplete. Johnson once more, the intended target. It's third and eight upcoming. Wow, that, that was a drop right there. You have to make that catch right there. Quarterback scrambling through an accurate pass to Johnson. Injury timeout with an Rattler down on the field. That's one of the DBs, Javen Morgan. He's getting tended to on the field. We'll step aside quickly. Time now for the All-State Good Hands play. And let's go back to that catch just moments ago by... Dakari Allen Johnson. Good job of leaving his feet, concentrating, helping out the quarterback with the first down grab on this drive. Nice third down conversion. See if they have a couple more good hands tricks in the bag. Allen Johnson, an Orlando native nearby Jones High School just up the road. So I talked earlier about the helmet. You like the helmet combination? I do. I do. Is that a ball print? You call it a scratch? It's like a claw? scratch, right? The claw, yeah, right? And with the number on the other side. And good job of them with the uniform. I, that's one thing I do get a little jealous of. You know, all these uniform combinations. You know, we didn't have that in my day. You had a helmet, same color all year. Then you, two jerseys you can wear, maybe three. But now they have uniform combinations galore. Important third and eight here for Bethune Cookman as able to get it away and there was a lot of contact before the ball arrived between Eric Smith and Tink Boyd as Simmons hops back up pass incomplete and the punting unit coming on for the Wildcats They're trying to go to that out route all the way across the field again and Boyd not able to come up with the catch a very low percentage pass, and if you have to attempt those type of throws on third down, Florida a will live with the results. Anthony Frederick here to punt it away. Gets it off. And fair catch. Signal by Jamari A. Sharid, and an outstanding job. Second time in this game that Frederick has pinned them inside the five yard line. It's gonna be spotted at the two, a 56 yard punt. And let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear. And uh, Jay, what jumps out to you on this board? Bo Nick's trying to make a Heisman push. Oregon over at Arizona State, they put 42 points on them. I think right now you say he and Michael Penix are the leaders right now. He put up 42. Impressive. And how about Mike Loxley of the Terps giving Michigan a little run for the money with a comeback effort, only losing by seven. So deep into their own territory once more. The Rattlers start at the two, trying to find any kind of running room. Terrell Jennings brought down quickly by Laquan Johnson Jr. No gain on the play. And I know they're backed up, but it's time for this Rattler offense. You know, they only had two drives, two possessions in the third quarter. Both of them, three plays and punt. 
You know, we've seen when this offense gets flat tires and they slow down, and now they need to get out of that rut and really jumpstart this offense. Dangerous pass in the end zone. Jamari A. Cherie keeps his balance, keeps on going across the 20, and there's a way to get some breathing room. A nice spark play from Sharid, who appeared to have been stopped in his own end zone, avoids the ankle tackle, and 23 yards later. Yeah, I was going to say this were two great efforts by Bethune Cookman on defense. I thought this was a great job coming underneath, but he gets pushed off, and then Clement almost had the angle to make a great play the line of scrimmage, but not able to bring Sharid to the ground, and Sharid made him pay for it, given the Rattlers first down. Let's see if that revs up the Rattler offense some more. Cheerleaders on the sideline shaking their orange and green pom poms. The handoff. There's a lot of space there for Terrell Jennings, and Jennings hours ahead for a gain of 14. Clement there once more on the stop along with Nicholas Rawls the second. So if Florida and him can have cheerleaders, why can't they have a dance ball? This is always curious. Jay, just sit down. I don't, not, Good not, job not of running. Today. Just curious. I mean, I'm, I did not attend the university, but if you have cheerleaders, you have a lot of them, why can't you I think it's have, have a just, dance ball? Just a personal choice. Dr. William P. Foster started it off, did a great job, and I think what's cool is that both of these programs have had fantastic band directors, legendary band directors. We'll talk about them in just a second here on first and 10. Play action. There's Kobe Gross, the halfback, the H-back, rather. And a good pickup there brought down by Joshua Thornhill. Another first down. Gross able to come all the way across the formation in good patience by Moose to get them the ball and that's why I say Moose is a really good beneficiary of a lot of great creative play calls by Willie Simmons. Two-yard pass, and then gross runs for the other eight to ten yards that help you have an efficient day throwing the football, even when, as we mentioned earlier, he's not been as accurate as we've seen in previous games. And what tends to throw off the defense is when we've watched, yes, the formations, but a lot of movement and shifting within those formations. Here, Musa dropping back and bounces it incomplete. Jeremy Musa, you mentioned, out of California, Chino Hills, the city. And has really come on in this system. Remember, came over from Vanderbilt last year, got to know the conference a little bit more. As a grad transfer and really connected with Willie Simmons, his head coach, a former quarterback, on second and ten, and the handoff to Jarrell Jennings, and Jennings with some determined and inspired running brought down. First to get to him was Deontay Washington, pick up a four. And now this is that, that moment of truth right now, but Boone Cookman defensively an obvious passing situation here. And I think what you have to do is take away Moose's pre-snap reads. If, if you're playing off, start off off and then run up. Or if you're going to give him a bump, look like you're close coverage, that way he'll look to go someplace else with the football. Looking for Young for the second level throw there for Jamari A. Sharif. Pass complete. And the drive keeps on going. Uh, yeah, three-level throws. You described it, and the, the first throw was open right there to Gross. I'm sorry, Kamari Young coming around across 81 would have been open for it as well, but Musa being the aggressive thrower that he is, saw an opportunity for a big play with that second-level throw. Big first down for Florida AM. and m Musa 14 of 20, 150 yards through the air. 
Looking back to pass, has a man, Marcus Riley trying to run underneath it, and the fastest man on the team couldn't get to it. As we mentioned, Musa not as sharp as he normally is. Riley can fly, and he overthrew him by about five yards, and he was open, got behind the secondary. Take a look at this throw here. That's a clean pocket. Oh, that's the throw you wish you had back there. Open wide receiver there. That's a highlight film right there. From Bethune Cookman, 35 yard line on. Second and 10 and sneaking through. There's Terrell Jennings along the left side. He's got one man to beat, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Rattlers. 35-yard run from Terrell Jennings. Will slash it between the tackles. Escaped. Smith, Cameron Gillis, correction, going to attempt the extra point. It's almost like the band is rubbing it in when they play songs like that as loudly as they do after the score. Well, they got it going on when the band is grooving, the fans are into it, and Terrell Jennings running like a workhorse into the end zone. Rattlers in control. Let's take a look around the CFP landscape as we count down to the CFP National Championship brought to you by AT&T. We won't get to it just yet here, folks. Uh, some technical difficulties. However, Terrell Jennings out of Duval played his high school ball at Mandarin High School with that touchdown to extend Florida A&M's lead 24 to 7 but you go back to that was a championship kind of drive Jay they started that ball on their own two yard line drive 98 yards down the field just under five minutes and the touchdown well, they had to have it I'm sure you know coach Simmons is gonna like that wish they would have gone flat in the third quarter but you get backed up and you go the distance they did it a number of ways. Got the ball to the wide receiver on the bubble screen to make him count. Uh, card running, had a couple downfield throws from Musa. So, really impressive drive for Florida A&M. This one bouncing out of bounds, and the penalty will spot the ball at the 35-yard line. And that's where... Bethune Cookman will start their drive. Now let's take a look around the CFP landscape as we count down the CFP National Championship brought to you by AT&T. Well, here's how things shake out. James Madison was on that list. They had to get nixed after their loss earlier today. And Jay, any surprise there? I mean, yeah, I just don't believe, people really don't believe in Washington like that. I think, you know, maybe that's because they're favored to lose tonight, and maybe that's why they're only at 15%, but I can see a path for them. They got one of the best quarterbacks in the country leading the team. Georgia's starting to get a little respect. It's crazy you say that. Every week we talk about Georgia, and it's like, yeah, but are they defending chips? Yeah, I mean, didn't they have a poll like they were, like, the least least percentage chance to win a national championship. And I was like, who's, who's saying that stuff? <laughs> and then, you know, and it's odd because then you see Ohio State and Michigan on that same list, and you know they play next week. Right. So, you know, one of them will have to go. So, like a process of elimination. It should have been like each of them at 50% because one of them going to lose next week. Strong first down run from Jimmy Robinson this time. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Allen Smith, Jr., with the stop. Maybe now a little chance to say, you saw my power rankings earlier, right? North Carolina Central is the number two team in the country after losing a week ago, but I, I believe North Carolina Central is on their way to FCS playoffs. I'm sure the HBCU community will 
wish them well in hopefully getting selected with a 9-2 and two record. Let me see what they'll do. False start. Offense. Number 66. Five yard penalty. It's second down. Well, Central had a convincing win earlier today over Delaware State, and Trey Oliver's crew moves, knocked off three CAA teams this season. Some impressive wins put together by the Eagles, the reigning champs in HBCU football. They won't be able to defend it. That's a lot. I think this is a lateral. Let's see where they spot it. And if it is, it deflected off his back shoulder and should go where the ball went out of bounds. But, I mean, this is too quick. You have to set this up more. That's a backward pass. And that ball should be spotted on about the 28-yard line as they're talking about it. And sometimes you can just tell by how quickly a quarterback throws the ball if it even has a chance to be a forward pass. And as the officials confer, they are moving the ball back to about that exact spot that you just mentioned, Jay. The previous play was a backward pass that went out of bounds at the 28-yard line. It will be third down. Spot on, partner. And, and that's one there where as a quarterback, you just have to take more responsibility and not throw it so quickly. Let him turn his shoulders and square toward the line of scrimmage. Get him going downhill. Just not in sync there on that series. And the offensive unit will trot back to the sideline. That, that, that is, that's Bethune-Cookman's offense. I mean, you know, coming into this game, you know, when I watched the film of them, and we saw them once in person as well, they're not pretty offensively. So you take an offense that's not pretty, that can't do the little things uh, simple, and then you have to go against a really good defense. That's why you got seven points in a game like this. Frederick said himself a really nice game. Sees the ball carrier trot backward, and Cherie was wrapped up immediately and brought down. 6.02 remaining here from Orlando for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Come back with us. Marching 100 took the field at Amway Center last night for the Battle of the Bands. Dr. Shelby Chipman, we mentioned earlier. Great band honor this weekend. And it's an event that everyone looks forward to and, and seeing. Okay, and Jane text me. Who won? I want to know yeah. who won. <laughs> you know, that's why I give credit. They're going to have this national championship of bands. I don't know who won. You have the battle of bands. Right. Let me know who won. Do a fan support <laughs> or survey or something. And, Jay, we oftentimes talk so much about the coaches and the players. Obviously, yeah, we're here for a football game. But they're band members who are just like student athletes, the way they put in the time, the energy, and the effort. As Junior Maritovic. In now at quarterback for Jeremy Musa. Started last game and the handoff here. And a short run, or good run rather, by Lee. But I think about for Florida AM, Dr. William P. Foster, Julian E. White, Dr. Julian E. White, and Dr. Shelby Chipman on the other side. Donovan Wells marched for the marching Wildcats under a legendary director by the name of Samuel C. Barry, who really took the pride to another level. And I just love hearing the stories of and just how everyone is drawn to their respective university and who they're representing, why it's so important to them. Can I, can I go back to my basic question? Mm -hmm. Well, let you, me start this other question. Is Florida A&M the only band without a dancing girl team, a dancing squad? I don't know. Uh, and then I also say, why not? I mean, that, that's 
become part of the show there. So got myself in trouble a couple years ago when I said, and you're getting never yourself be. in trouble I call here it like again. I see it. It's not That's trouble. your choice and your preference. So I, but there is lies a distinction of the Marching 100 that they elect not to. So I just wonder, are they the only band that does that? I don't know. That's something that you can research, Jay, since I know it's burning you inside. As Leland Wilhoy hurdles a defender, but a flag comes out in the process. Time. That was over Amari Hill Robinson, one of the top defenders for Bethune Cookman, who we hadn't called his name at all tonight until just now. The Florida AM, who came in as preseason favorites out of the Swag East, was able to wrap things up and take care of business. They're looking to extend their win streak to nine in just over four minutes before they will have said mission accomplished. That one bounces and the pass incomplete. You know, what really impresses me about Florida a &M is the fact that home winning streak, what's their home winning streak up to? Like, they like 17, 17, 18, 18 games. Yeah. And that's going to be tough to break that streak. And whoever goes in there for that SWAC championship, you know, you're going against the Rattlers, you're going against the streak, you're going against the city of Tallahassee, and that's going to be a tough task that Prairie View is going to have to try and overcome first weekend of December. Will Hoyt, who is a Tallahassee native, transferred in from the Ohio Valley Conference. Tell you more about the fam you punter when we come back. Men's hoops coming your way tomorrow. It's a featured game from Madison Square Square Garden on ESPN. First, the defending champs and number five UConn's have to take on Indiana at one Eastern and follow that up by Texas, 19th rank in the country taking on Louisville at 3.30. How about John Chaney, a graduate yeah. of Bethune-Cookman University, was a guard, played alongside, I think, with uh, Jack Simon McLaren in the process, and he went on to have a very successful career. Remember, he did his thing at Chaney State at HBCU up in the Northeast, Division II back at the time, and then over to Temple as the head coach, but a part of the Basketball Hall of Fame. One of the greats. Yeah, did his thing at Temple. Had the Owls ranked number one in the country at one point during his tenure there. Legendary coach. And, and you know what? I want to take a point of personal privilege. You and I, I think, will share on this one. Legendary coach, congratulations to Buddy Pugh. South Carolina State, his final game as a coach there after 20 plus years at the helm and to send him out on top with the victory. Congratulations, buddy. It was been job well done in Orangeburg. Second that indeed because we call him often the dean of coaches and the way that he's uplifted the conference and obviously won and set the standard in the conference winning eight MEAC championships, winning a celebration bowl back in 2021. That was huge. Yep. The signature win there, I think, for him. He, he we talked to him, he looked back and said, yeah, beating that Jackson State squad in that celebration bowl was definitely a highlight. And you look at a young coach like Raymond Woody, if he can come close to half the success, but if you had, you had a good career, you had a good run. He switches to quarterback, it's Dominic Ponder now. And as the signal caller with under four minutes to go. And the pass incomplete to Jalen Brown. Yeah, Ponder, true freshman from Naples, Florida. 6'5", 
size. A lot of size there. So more of the pocket passer type. See, and then get an opportunity to play in this Florida Classic and get some throws underneath his belt. Of, you know, coaches who donned the maroon and gold. We talked about Simon McLaren, Alvin Wyatt, Brian Jenkins, who had a lot of success in the process. Free play here, and it's into the hands, and they're going to say it's complete. Davino Ellington stepped out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Offside, defense number 91. That penalty will be declined the results of the nice play as a first down. Nice catch, nice location of the throw. And a 29 yard completion to Ellington. Ponder again, pass complete into the hands of his tight end, Moore. Good arm on display right there. Bondo's got a nice fastball. And coming in, he's fresh and obviously excited, but he's throwing the ball hard and accurate. It'll be interesting to see if Florida A&M decides to challenge him and maybe give him some more zone coverage and see if he can throw you a variety of passes. The true freshman out of Naples dropping back here on second down, looking ahead and overthrows. You saw Walter Simmons the third start this game. We mentioned Leek Bethea who was banged up a game time decision. Luke Sprague is out and so the quarterback room is deep for Bethune Cookman. Pondo, you made us First completions of the season here on this drive, trying to pick up this first down. Look up. And it's intercepted into the hands of Eric Smith, his second of the ball game. And the Dark Cloud defense coming up with their third turnover of this contest. Yeah, and just not really sure where Ponder was going with that football. No Wildcat receiver in the area. And that's when you just chalk it up as a true freshman. When you see something you don't like, throw it away or take off running. Well, good time to tell you that the rock stars of racing are heading to Sin City. Don't miss the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Folks, that's coming up tonight at 11.30 Eastern on ESPN with additional coverage on ESPN Plus and ESPN Deportes in English and Spanish at midnight. Well, head coach Willie Simmons and his team find themselves two minutes and 38 seconds away from completing the perfect play in South Western Athletic Conference. Fumble. And it's fumbled, but recovered by Florida AM, the quarterback Maritovic. And when you think about the job that Willie Simmons has done at Florida AM, following in a great line, we mentioned some of the, the legends for Bethune Cookman. When you think of Florida AM, you think of Jake Gaither, how about the Hall of Famer, Ken Riley, Rudy Hubbard delivering. Billy Joe. The D2 National Championship, well, Division I AA Championship with Rudy Hubbard, and of course, Billy Joe and that Gulf Coast offense that he created. And I guess you'll add Willie Simmons to that list soon, particularly the path that he's on, depending on his tenure there. I mean, he's going to become a very hot commodity, I mean, in fact, and he deserves it. The fact that the job he's done, you know, I'll never forget when he actually wanted that job. He had a pretty good job. He was having success over at Prairie View A&M, but him being the Florida guy, he actually said, I just think that Florida A&M is a gold mine. And looks like he went digging for gold. He found it. And 
This will go down as one of the most memorable seasons in Florida a &M football history in recent memory. Still got one to go. But impressive year for Florida a &M. And you had an opportunity to talk to his wife before the game. She's Chase all Simmons, yeah, yeah. Well, she graduated from Florida A&M. Yeah, she's more so. rattler than you are, Tiffany. That's, that's pretty hard to do. You <laughs> <laughs> Will Boy with a great carry. Very passionate. And, and that's something that, you know, any fan base is, is wanting to see someone deliver wins. And that's consistently what Willie Simmons has done ever since he's come in to take over this program helped to deliver winning seasons after there had been a great drought there. And once more, Will Voigt, the carrier, ball carrier, and Devin Harrell with the stop, and that's likely going to be the final play of the ball game as Willie Simmons and the Rattlers finish perfect in sweat play. And they take down their in-state rival, Bethune Cookman, in the Florida Classic with a 24 to seven victory. The Rattlers will get ready for the SWAC championship in a couple of weeks. And good exchange there as the two were familiar with each other and Coach Woody and Coach Simmons. And a lot of respect between both of these programs and these staffs. The number one team in HBCU football and one of the top teams in the country overall continue to be impressive. And I always say they got a great quarterback and they got a defensive line that are some dogs. Tough out for anybody. The Rattlers extend their record to 10 and one on the season. The winning streak is intact and there's that SWAC championship that's on the way coming December 2nd from Tallahassee as they will face off against the SWAC West champs in Prairie View. Jay, your final thoughts here from this one in Camping World Stadium. That's the setup, but congratulations to Florida a and and congratulations to Howard University clinching a spot in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. They'll be waiting for the winner of that game in Tallahassee first weekend in December. There you go, Jay, and it you never fails, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We enjoyed our time here in the city. Beautiful. It was the Rattlers who came out striking first, taking advantage of miscues. They put up 17 unanswered and would go on to win 24 to 7. Coming up next, College Football 150, the greatest presented by Xfinity. For Jay Walker and the rest of our great crew, I'm Tiffany Green saying so long from Orlando. Till next time, we out.